Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower Preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Monumental, along with the expansions, Lost Kingdoms, as well as the new African Empires. Monumental is brought to you by Funforge. It's for one to five players when you add in the expansions for ages 14 and up, and games range anywhere from 90 to 120 minutes. In Monumental, each player will control a civilization that will evolve through their city. Represented by a grid of three by three cards from your civilization deck, these city cards can each be activated to gather various resources such as science, military, production, culture, and gold that will allow them to trigger many, many actions. However, you cannot activate all your cards at once, leading you to some tough choices on each turn. You will need to select the cards that are the most needed at that time. The resources gathered from the activated city cards will allow the players to acquire cards from a common pool, allowing them to get improved buildings, technologies, and build wonders, and therefore to leverage their civilization deck to new heights through more and more efficient card combos. Through cards and game progress, you will advance through the eras. A modular board at the center of the table holds each civilization army. The board is made of provinces to be conquered. However, the unoccupied provinces are controlled by barbarians who will provide resources to the player who defeats them. Holding a conquered province also brings victory points at the end of the game. The player with the most impressive civilization at the end of the game will be remembered for all time. And they also get to win the game. So this is a big civilization conquering and building out your city type game and some deck building here as well. So the interesting thing here is the fact that this game we covered in a Dice Tower preview last year, as well as Tom has done a fantastic review. So if you want more detail about how the base game plays, definitely go check those out. We're going to broadly look at some of the things in this game, as well as the Lost Kingdoms, and then ultimately the African Empires, which I it's worth noting, I have not played African Empires, but there's a couple new game modes here that we're gonna kind of discuss and talk about a little bit that sound super intriguing, and I'm a big fan of this game. So to have this version in deluxe form is fantastic, and that's worth noting, like I said, is that we have the metal coins, we have all the miniatures, and they are a thing of beauty. This game and the artwork, I love it, the cards, and how they all look in your city tableau is really, really cool. And how all the different, there's like nine possible actions you can perform in this game. And what's also cool is that this map, right out of the gate, when you're setting up your game, you're gonna build out this map. And based on the player count, as well as what you're trying to do in the game, based on the expansions or whatever, will determine this map. And there's tons of references on how to build it out and what player count to use with what maps and so forth. But as you get more familiar with the game, you can build out your own maps. There's so much versatility and expandability in this game, which is just simply fantastic. And you'll be choosing a civilization to play. Each civilization has their own deck of cards to start, as well as in this deluxe version, these amazing miniatures. But there are so many to choose from between the base game and the Lost Kingdoms that you really have tons of replayability. And again, these miniatures are just simply amazing. So this game takes place over centuries. You're gonna be moving through the eras, one, two, and three. And this is part of where the deck building comes into. You deal out these cards and you're gonna be using resources and things to acquire them to put them into your civilization deck. Now, there's also wonders of the world that you can build that will give you different abilities as well that are fantastic. And there's monsters. You have the option to add these into the game, which I'm partial to doing for sure. Very, very cool. And so what you're doing on your turn is that you're basically building out your city and you're gonna build it in that three by three grid. Now, there's some exceptions when you get into the Lost Kingdom. There's some races there that do some different things. But the thing here is that you have this main grid for your city, and you build it out, and then you have to choose 
uh, which grid lines that you're basically going to activate. You're going to pick a row and a column and you'll just slightly turn the cards and you'll gather those resources. Now, the important thing about these resources, these are temporary resources throughout the game and you have to use them on your turn or you'll lose them. And then on your turn, you have nine possible actions you can perform. We're just going to briefly touch on these for the sake of time. But the thing here is that it is that bit of a deck builder, like I said, and one of the main things you're gonna be doing is acquiring development cards or basic building cards or wonders. You'll be acquiring them from the different eras that you're in and adding them to your civilization deck. Of course, you have to pay the cost and so forth. And all of these things, all of these actions, you're gonna be able to do as many as you want, as long as you have the cost you can pay or the resources to do so. And of course, you can complete a wonder after acquiring one, you still have to pay additional resources to complete it. It is one of the seven wonders after all. And then you can develop a cultural policy within your civilization. You can also conquer a province and move your military. And that's one of the big things, right? Is that you position your military, you have to have military resources to do so, and you conquer a province. Either you're taking it over from one of the barbarian hordes or from one of your fellow players. So military might is definitely a thing in the game, which I particularly enjoy. And then uh, the construct an outpost. And again, this goes to your military. If you have three of your uh, soldiers in a particular province, you can convert those into an outpost. And it does give you like three defense to that area to do so. But you can ever only have two outposts at any one time. And then you can play explorers. And explorers are gonna do a vast array of things, but they can never be used for military might. They're out of the conflict altogether. But they can go and look at different things at markets and so forth. And then you have the ability to use all the effects on the activated cards in your city. Now, the thing with that is that the cards that you tapped to get those resources at the beginning, you have the option. You don't have to use their abilities, but you have the option to use the different abilities within that uh, row and column that you so chose. And you can make scientific progress within your city, which is really cool. It's a lot of scientific cards that come up and how you activate them and so forth. So, you know, gaining more, again, of the different culture, the different buildings, and doing all the things that give you scientific advantage over your fellow players are things worthwhile. Again, it is about developing your civilization. And so after you finish the game, you'll calculate all your points. There's a handy reference card for doing so. Really makes it super easy. There is a scoreboard as well, but really just follow the instructions on this card and you score and find out whoever is the ultimate civilization. Now, moving over to the Lost Kingdoms, the big thing about this expansion right out of the gate is the fact that it adds the fifth player. Yes. And there are four new factions here. This one you see out on the board right now is the Atlantis folk, which is the one I'm most excited about, absolutely, 100%. And there's all kinds of new cards that come with the different factions. You know, they have uh, the Aztec and you have Amazons and so forth. So there's a lot of neat new factions and abilities with these factions as well. And there's new wonders and there's new tiles and different tiles do various things as well, adding a lot more depth to the game. So this expansion, um, after playing with it over the last couple days, I have to say that I don't know that I would play without these particular factions. I really like it. And this board set up right now that we have is the no place like home. It's for a two player. But this is a specific board based on the instructions they give you for different um, player counts and so forth. But again, as you get more familiar with this game, you can create your own boards, which is really fantastic. But I really like these new factions that come in this new expansion. Oh, it's so cool. So definitely go check out Tom's full review on the Lost Kingdoms to find out more information about what's all in that expansion. Now, let's take a little bit closer look at this African Empires, as that's what's up on Kickstarter. So the thing here, again, is that I have not played this expansion, but I have just been given the material, and it sounds pretty amazing. So the different... Uh, civilizations. I'm really excited about, about trying those out and giving them a closer look. But this whole idea of continuous play. So what happens is that everybody will activate their city at the same time and then each player will in turn do one action and move around the table. And this is going to almost like uh, brick by brick you're building out the city and so forth. But the thing here is that it gives you a chance to react to your other players at the table, react to whatever they're doing 
which is pretty neat. I like this continuous play idea. I, I haven't tried it yet, but it sounds super intriguing, and it definitely is one of the things that has my attention for this expansion, for sure, along with all the new civilizations, because all those miniatures and things, again, just beautiful. And, you know, this game definitely has been something I've really enjoyed as one of the Dice Tower previews we've done so far. This is definitely one of my favorites, probably in my top 10. Also in African Empires, they're adding quests. Yes, so quests are going to be fairly difficult from what I understand. They're big objectives, hidden objectives, actually. No one knows what you're actually working on. Hopefully you can fulfill them and it could potentially be a decisive win at the end. But the thing here is that much like the monsters in the game, they're not required in order to play, but it just gives you another level, another dimension, something more to add to it. There's just so much content and different ways to play. I really am intrigued to see what all comes out of African Empires. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview. However, most of what you've seen here is actually the done and published product. However, all the African Empire stuff is definitely prototype. So you'll want to keep an eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur and definitely go dig into that campaign page to find out what's new. I'm going to, I'm pretty excited. So, you know, this is definitely, like I said before, a game that I really, really enjoy. But ultimately, folks, it's really up to you to decide if this looks like something that would be of interest to you, and I'm sure they would appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me, and until next time, we'll see you at the table.